Hello, and welcome to Anything Goes, a podcast where I talk about anything and everything I want to. Today, I have a special guest, one of my friends who is even gayer than I am, and we are going to talk about music and TV shows and movies, so it should be a great time. So, welcome to the podcast, Jackson. Hi, guys. <clears throat> Hello, and thank you for joining. I really appreciate it. Oh, I already know it's going to be a pleasure. It's talking to you. What a treat. On this very special first episode of Anything Goes, um, we were just talking about how I started this and whatever else. So, I had to invite the gayer person than I am, you know, to join the pod <laughs> so we can talk about some gay stuff. Oh, honey, it doesn't get much gayer than you. Oh, okay. That I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> so just a disclaimer, you guys, because of COVID, we are socially distanced over a video call. So I just yes. want to make you aware of that that we are not together so if there's any glitches or anything like that that is why yes we have to be socially distanced everybody ever but it stays so that was a perfect example of the glitch i was talking about you guys that was perfect. nuts right perfect. after i said it what are my odds <laughs> Odds uh, are like very slim, but apparently high. Oh right, apparently it happens. I mean, I definitely know that from doing Zoom and all you know those kind of things for work and whatnot and for school. I definitely understand Girl, the glitches. Don't, don't even get me started on Zoom. Those calls are stressful. <laughs> I feel that, but those are the t the days of our lives. <laughs> get the pun. Yeah, the days of our lives. It's like the soap opera. <laughs> you know, we gotta we gotta go. The days of our lives. We had to go with it. Wait, was that a real thing or was that just a thing on Friends? No, Days of Our Lives is a real show. I didn't oh, realize wow, that it was a real show either until I just looked it up and found out it actually was a real show, but he just was not on what it, if, obviously. I was going to say, what if the guy from Friends was actually on it? That would be hilarious. <laughs> he was on General Hospital, I believe, which is a different soap opera. He? I believe My so. My grandma watches that. I feel like soap operas are such an old lady thing. I don't like soap operas at all. I love soap operas because they're stupid because they're always dramatic. They are way over dramatic and just the way they film them, I cannot stand it. It's like Degrassi, like it's so <laughs> dramatic, no reason at all. That is very much a, uh, you know, teen soap opera kind of show for sure. Oh, a hundred percent. One hundred percent. Oh, I totally get that. So, Miss Jackson, did you watch the Grammys on Sunday? I did not, but I have seen some of the performances and I know who won some of the awards. Let's talk Taylor. Okay. So, first of all, I was not mad. The rest of the fandom, the Swifties, you know, the Swiftie army, was very mad that she lost five out of the six awards she was nominated for and i was just happy because she won album of the year which is such an honor just because of the fact mm -hmm. that i feel like song of the year and record of the year yeah it's cool it was one song that was popular but for an artist to win album of the year that's a huge deal because mm -hmm. that means that the album as a whole is getting the recognition that it deserves and the album was so good. Miss Taylor, if you're listening, keep that up, honey. Folklore was such a reset, such a dream, especially during 2020 and the COVID times. It was so nice to hear some different stories coming from my favorite artist. So it was just amazing that she was able to get the recognition that she finally deserves after the Grammy snubbed Ariana Grande. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. Megan the Stallion. Megan, Let's discuss. Absolutely love Megan. What, absolutely what love are we Megan. thinking about? Because everyone is talking about this. What are our thoughts on her performance with Cardi? 
Okay, first of all, I literally just watched it again last night with Lexi. Her Cardi's performance as a whole was not good. Um, she the hair. I'm not not a fan of the hair. The outfit that Cardi was wearing looked like it was from Party City. And then when she ripped it off, I was like, this is not it, sis. And on top of that, I I heard that she was sick. I heard she was sick. But she was also lip syncing, which could be a factor of her being sick. Obviously, because, you know, artists do that. But I was not a fan. It was just Cardi's performance was not up to par with what I've seen from her before and doing, you know, up is one of my favorite songs. And I was like, so excited to see this like new, you know, Cardi that we're seeing. And then Mm -hmm. she's sitting there and she's going up, up, up. I'm like, girl, what are you doing? Are you trying to Vogue? Cause you're not doing it. I was, I didn't know. Okay. I'll admit the performance was crap until Megan came. Exactly. It was (laughs) Megan came on and it went, through the roof like i wanted to be there when megan came on <laughs> megan killed it she came out and like that's what i'm saying like megan's outfit was like not identical to cardi's but it was supposed to be similar within the same lines and megan's looked mm-hmm. like it was couture it looked like she could wear it at paris fashion week where cardi's looked like she just came from party city as a robot for halloween <laughs> <laughs> like that's it that's it cardi honey impressed. if you're listening if you're listening, we love you, but honey, I was not. That was a mess at all. But Megan did amazing. Her the classical or you know jazz version of Body and then Savage was absolutely. I know. Iconic. I kind of liked it. I was like, I'm here for this. Although I was looking forward to seeing her perform and seeing her, you know, twerk her ass off like she always does. Oh, exactly. But you know, but I was kind of looking forward because Miss Beyonce was there. I was kind of looking forward to maybe getting a little. Beyonce Megan Savage action going on, but we didn't get that. I mean, it wasn't. Didn't she do the remix though? Like, I swear to God, I heard yeah. Beyonce singing. She did. But, like, but Beyonce, where was did she? Not why come wasn't out. she on this? Why not? So I have really. no clue. Which was kind of cool, but it was also like, if she's there, why isn't she doing it with you? You know. That's true. I'm like, well, maybe they weren't there because it felt to me like a lot of them were in different spaces. Um, like spots kind of all over the place so maybe she wasn't there well Beyonce was there she just was like sitting at the table in the main lounge where everyone else was sitting when they were announcing the awards and whatnot oh okay because Beyonce okay. speaking of Miss Beyonce can we just congratulate her because she yes. is not only the first female artist first black artist but first artist in history male or female black white whatever to win the most grammys in grammy history yes it's so amazing i'm so proud of her like represent the fucking community girl like she did it and her speech about her kids and about black voices black queens black kings Absolutely love that, that she was giving them the recognition. Black Parade is a great song. So I was absolutely... And she looked amazing, too, on top of that. Oh, God. Amazing. She always does. And then uh, Megan won the award for Savage, and Beyonce went up there with her. So she... By the way, had Megan not won for Savage, Beyonce wouldn't have won the record. So, yeah, you know, props to Megan for, you know, allowing or getting Beyonce on that record to be able to win that award. Um, And she, Megan was just so thankful of Beyonce and all the work that Beyonce has done. So proud of her. Um, And it was, it was a great, great way for, especially after 2020 and all the shit that went down last year and that summer, it was great to see (laughs) so many diverse people winning awards you know yes it was so good and we honestly needed that after 2020 like these grammys were okay can we talk about miss taylor's performance taylor okay i heard a theory i saw a theory y'all 
So the theory that I saw you and your Taylor Swift theories. Okay, I am deep in the Taylor Swift <laughs> conspiracy theories on TikTok. That is all I see on my for you page. It is the funniest thing. Half of them are the most ridiculous things you could ever think of. Where it's like, oh, she walked thirteen steps, which means that we're getting thirteen albums. And I'm like, what are you? What are you on? What? Like it's ridiculous. <laughs> what are you taking? And exactly. why are you sharing? Exactly. So, but, so the theory that I heard about her performance in particular, she performed, uh, what was it? Cardigan, August, and Willow. Mm -hmm. And first of all, it was amazing. Second of all, she looked great. But third of all, so you know how she started up on like that house? Mm -hmm. Like the top of the house? So if you remember from the Lover era, in the lover music video, how she's in a house Mm -hmm. that the idea of this performance was that her being on top of the house and inside that, that room that was underneath the roof. That's the top Mm -hmm. of the house from the lover music video because the top of the house was dark because she had not, they were each a different era in each room. And so folklore and Evermore is the top of the house. Well, girl, what about the windows? Well, what about the front door? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. In the Lover video, down below, in the video, you can see down below oh. the different rooms. But, mm-hmm. and then on top of that, so over the weekend, Taylor also released the trailer. You know, uh, Disney released the trailer for the new Spirit movie, which Taylor's re recorded version of Wildest Dreams is in that. And she um, posted on her Instagram story. People went wild. And so, you know, that just kind of, you know, remember back in November when she was the re-recorded version of Love Story was in the trailer with Ryan Reynolds. And now we're yes. getting Fearless, the re-recording. We are, she basically just gave us a hint that the 1989 re-recording is coming in June. Because that's the next date for the next re-recording to come out. So, Mm -hmm. and then on top of that, she was wearing a flower dress, which is quintessential 1989 era. And Mm -hmm. she also in, or, or I saw that possibly we're getting speak now because the dress that she was wearing when she was performing, she kept flipping, like she kept flipping her dress, which Mm -hmm. if you know, the flipping of the dress is the iconic Speak Now album cover. Yeah. And she didn't she doesn't do anything for no reason. And one time I could see as a coincidence, but she did it multiple times. And it seemed like the second time she did it, it was like almost intentional. That she was like, I'm giving them something. Little Easter egg. She's like the Easter bunny. Oh, I know. She's like the Easter bunny. And she just she just walks and Easter eggs just come out of her ass, just yeah, she's she shits them. She's she's good. She really is just the Easter Bunny. Like it's kind of nuts. Also, Gaga, Gaga. Also, yes. So I did not watch when they announced it, but Gaga won Best Pop Duo for "Rain on Me" with Miss Ariana. Mm-hmm. So props to them because that was that's a good award. Like I was really excited yes. because I just it was either it was between her. Or Taylor for Exile with Bon Iver, which I would have been fine either way. But Rain on Me, it really was that moment. Yes. Rain and on me oh was my for God. Sure the and did you see on Twitter, Ariana like tweeted at Lady Gaga? She was like, wake up, we just won the Grammy. I was like, yeah. she was asleep. With the I screenshot, saw that. the I screenshot of yes. Lady Gaga when she was doing the, when Joanne had first come out and she was doing the lives once a week and she was meditating in her bed and mm-hmm. it was the picture that she was like wake up sis we just won a grammy <laughs> so, uh it was so funny right and i saw something billy eilish wanted to give her reward to somebody to else Megan. i can't remember who yeah she so okay let's talk about this for a second so billy we're talking about Billie Eilish here. She, mm-hmm. okay. I don't know whoever's listening. You might not know, but I 
was not a Billie Eilish fan whatsoever. And it wasn't until her documentary just came out and I watched her documentary and I, you know, I paid attention. I listened to what she was saying and now I have so much respect for her and I really understand where she's coming from because I'm kind of the same way. You know, a lot of the darkness outshines the light. So I get where Billy's coming from and why her music is the way it is. So getting to see her perform in the Grammys after becoming a Billie Eilish fan, you know, I didn't join the bandwagon back when everyone was joining the bandwagon of Billie Eilish, Billie Eilish. Back when Bad Guy first came out, everyone was jumping on the bandwagon. Everyone was a fan. Da, 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 da. And so I just joined the fandom and seeing her perform in the Grammys, she did amazing. And then her, cause last year I remember it was a tight race between her and Ariana and Billie won she almost swept the entire Grammys. So, you know, it was sad because at the time I was not a fan of Billie Eilish and I really wanted Ariana to win. And I was really upset because Ariana won nothing. And thank you. Next was one of her most iconic albums. So yes, for her to not get anything, it was very upsetting, but now listening to Billie's music that was nominated and realizing how good it is. I, I, you know, I'm a complete stan at this point. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say I'm a stan. I'll say she's okay. She, yeah, like, it, for sure. There's some songs where I'm just like, it's not not for me, but there's some songs that I just absolutely love. Okay, Bad Guy is a jam. For sure. That is a good song. Um, I also love Ocean Eyes. Yeah. That's a good one. And I also love, oh, what was the other one? I can't remember the name of the song off the top of my head, but I loved it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, for sure. That I totally understand that. Um, oh, You Should See Me in a Crown, was that was it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. I really like everything I wanted. I really like Copycat. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of... Um, oh, what's it called? Let me just pull it up real quick. Pull up the the, the Jujal. It is uh, when the party's over. Big fan. Yes, big fan oh, of that. Such a good song. It's a sad song, but it you know I get it. I have felt that before. So being able to relate to someone, especially someone that's you know close to our age, um, mm-hmm. you see, hearing yeah. and you know she talks about the things that people don't talk about, especially when it comes to mental illness and the darkness that she feels. And I yeah. appreciate that because not a lot of people would talk about that as deeply as she does. Right. So right. I respect that. Yeah, exactly. So, I have so much respect for her. Right. And so <clears> when <throat> she got up there and won her award for everything I wanted, she was very like, Megan deserves this. Megan, you know, had one of the best years of her career, it, you know, her starting off year. She just is coming into her life. Um, you know, and she was just very like, just wanted to give it to her at kind of very, very on the lines of Adele wanting to give her award to Beyonce and breaking the award and saying, this is you for you. It was a very mean girls share the crown moment. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was really cool. So speaking of Lady Gaga, we are huge fans of the Chromatica Lady Gaga era. Yes. For sure. Oh my goodness. Which, which, what gay isn't, honestly? What, what gay isn't obsessed? Like, exactly. It's if Lady you're Gaga. gay or you're not obsessed with Chromatica, what are you doing? If you're gay and not obsessed with Lady Gaga, what are you doing? Let's be honest. Ex- that too. Yes. Exactly. But, okay, we're going to talk about the controversy. So, yes. okay, so many of you might not know, but Lady Gaga's album Chromatica came out in May of 2020. First of all, mm-hmm. after so many leaks and so many things, I think she felt that she just almost needed to just release it just because yeah. it was so, everyone was hearing it already and she wanted to get the credit for it and make the money on it and be able to tour. And I totally understand that. Um, 
and then she, so she dropped it. She was supposed to drop it back in, you know, April, but then, you know, with everything in COVID getting bad, she was like, this is not the time we need to be focusing on COVID. Yeah. And so she released Mm -hmm. it, you know, in then May. So it was great. The album by, I have no negatives about the album, but when it came to the promotion of said album, she did nothing. No, she really didn't. She didn't. There was a couple billboards here and there. She did the VMAs in August. And that was really the only thing that we got. And then we got the Chromatica Oreos, which is like, girl, Oreos. That's a weird promotion. Like, yeah. I love them. They taste great. They look cool. Love it. But sis, really? Like, Oreos. That's what you're going to use to promote your album? Right. It was just... The, this whole era has been lackluster. And then I saw this post on Twitter the other day saying that she's releasing some sort of something with Chromatica in June. It's some sort of like new vinyl or new cover art or something like that. And I'm like, girl, the era is gone and past and dead. Like, you know, we're almost ready for the next era. If we're being honest, I am ready. Um, <laughs> I'm super ready for it, but it's like, I don't want to start a new era while COVID's still happening. Right. Because right. it's just going to lose everything. Whereas like Dua Lipa, Dua Lipa with her album Future Nostalgia that came out early 2020, she had done online shows. She was doing so many things that you can do over virtually. And I commend her for that. And, you know, even just going on live on Instagram or on, on Facebook or something just to promote the album and I get that 2020 was a big year, especially when it came to politics and stuff like that. And Lady Gaga is obviously oh very, goodness. very in depth with the political side and the political climate of the U.S. So, mm-hmm. and so I understand where she's coming from and why she didn't promote so much because there was other things we needed to focus on. But when you're going to release an album that is arguably your best album ever, why wouldn't mm-hmm. you promote it and want it to do well? And be able to, you know, I mean, she could have very easily been, had she promoted it, had her record label promoted it better, she could have very well been on that album of the year list. She could have been, you know, record of the year, song of the year. She could have very easily swept the Grammys this year, like she did the VMAs back in August. Mm hmm. So it was. And oh my God, her VMA performance. It was great. That's was legendary it was great that was the only taste of chromatica that we got like girl i just i really wish she had promoted this album more honestly this album could have been such a huge success exactly like it could have been amazing and had COVID not happened we would have got a whole like thing like she was going to go on the chromatica ball tour which i guarantee you after the chromatica ball she would have gone and done some sort of big tour and or switched up her residency in Vegas from Enigma Enigma to Chromatica, she could have very easily done a huge, like, it could have been the, you know, the biggest moment of her career for sure and sold out stadiums instead mm-hmm. of arenas. She could have very easily mm-hmm. gone on some giant stadium tour and sold out every show because there were so many people in love with this album that would have gone and done that. Mm-hmm. So it was just no, and and the album was so. I wanted a sour candy single. Let's be. I, just, I wanted a sour candy video. Oh, for sure, that was dope. That was such a good song. Like Little Mix, their first of all, their videos are amazing. Just in general, Lady Gaga's videos are amazing. Mm-hmm. So imagine the two of them creatively directing this music video. It would have been iconic. Wait a minute, honey. We know that wasn't Little Mix, right? Blackpink. Oh my god, did I say Little Mix? Yes, you did. Oh my god, no, Blackpink. Whoops. It's Blackpink. I know that. <laughs> I, I knew that. I totally knew that. I didn't just like completely I just completely mind blanked for a second. <laughs> I was about to say, um, why are we talking about Little Mix when it was Blackpink that did it? Oh no no no, it was Blackpink. Whoopsie. That's embarrassing. <laughs> but, it's okay. But that yeah, so they have great videos, great songs, great 
live performances, so they would easily. And it, I mean, even they did like mm-hmm. they did the um, no attendance like I Heart Radio Festival. They did so many things where she could have gone and performed, and she didn't. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Maybe they didn't ask her. I don't know. Maybe they did, and she just said no. Who knows? Because also she's like silent on social media. She barely posts anything. Yeah, I've noticed that. I'm like, where are you, girl? Where the last, well, the last okay. album w- when it came to Joanne, she was posting all the time, and now she's posting like barely anything. And if it's anything, it's about you know whatever else she's doing, whatever projects, whatever other projects she's doing with her makeup brand and doing this book and running the whole um, Born This Way Foundation. It's some, it's usually something like that. But I'm like, sis, let's get, let's do something. Her makeup line is honestly so good, though. Like, I'm kind of obsessed. <laughs> I have um, a bag full of it. Can't relate. I have not even seen <laughs> any of it in person. Okay. So. It's, it's it's amazing. Can't relate. Um, and then, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, she, okay, I feel like another reason she's not really promoting this is because she's in Italy and she's recording this movie. That's true. I forgot about that. She's doing that, she's, um, yeah, the assassination the Gucci. of Gucci. Yeah, that's right. I forgot that she's doing that, but she just started filming that. Yeah, that's true. They just started filming that within the last couple weeks. So I was very like, I totally forgot she was doing that. That you know, um, that docu series or whatever it is, the mini series. I think it's supposed to be a movie. I have no clue, but I'm excited to see it. Whatever it is, whatever it is. Me too. I'm excited to see. I mean, I think that murder case is honestly so fascinating. So. Yes. I'm definitely going to have to go to look. And I think, I honestly think it's one of those, like the true crime story, like how they did the assassination of uh, Versace, Versace and then the OJ Simpson trial. So it's mm-hmm. like a mini series like that. I mean, I'd watch it. I mean, it's Adam Driver and Lady Gaga. Right. Like, And um, Ryan Ren or not Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Murphy is directing it. Wait, really? Yeah, he directed okay, all of the know that. true crime stories. He did all those. That's why. No, I thought Sarah... you meant he was directing the the uh, Gucci. He is movie that she's. Did. Oh, I didn't know she was. He was doing that. Okay. It's the it's the series. Okay. It's like the third season of the true crime series. I thought the third season was about the Monica Lewinsky scandal. No, I don't think so. I have no clue, but I, I know I'm he's grow. directing it. I'm pretty sure he's directing it. Oh, yeah. That's why, like, Sarah Paulson was in the first one, and all these other people were in the second <laughs> one. Darren Chris, because he obviously did Glee, so he knew him. Um, so they, you know, Ryan Murphy has all these connections with all these people that are in these shows now that he's directing. He is absolutely amazing he can do literally any genre on this planet i was gonna say he's done pretty much every genre from american horror story to glee to pose to american crime story he you know euphoria like he's done so many things that you wouldn't think Mm -hmm. of and he's just a very like versatile director and Mm -hmm. i love that and i love that all of his shows have lgbt characters in them and they're amazing. Yes. Oh my goodness. And now including Pose Lady Gaga. Only... For mm-hmm. a third time. Yes. So. And with Pose, I'm only on season one, but I'm telling you, I've only watched like six episodes, but like every other episode, I am sobbing. Yeah. This show is so good. It is a great like, show. I'm totally obsessed. Like, it's so good. It's so relatable for so many people. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it's it's a show that I think they we needed at the time it came out and mm-hmm. i think we still need it oh and just wait sis in the second season patty lapone is in it <gasps> wait really she's in the second season and she has a little bit of a riff or you know situation with the girl who plays um blanca Ooh, the main character I Miss mj blanca. rodriguez um she's mm-hmm. amazing but yeah, she has a little bit of a tussle with her uh, over a certain situation that I can't tell you about. But yes, it is okay. very, it's very good. And I watched the panel lineup of 
the after they finished season one and they had just announced that they were doing season two and ryan murphy Uh they were like because they're they're known for their guest stars and for this big cast that they have um from billy porter to dominique jackson to mj rodriguez to all these different people that Uh are big actors in the activists in the lgbt community and it was just amazing to see all these people but it was funny because someone asked ryan murphy at this panel they were like, oh, um, do you have any like special guest stars that are coming this season? And she, he looked over at MJ Rodriguez, who plays Blanca, and said, just letting you know, you get to work with Patti Lapone this season on multiple episodes. And when I tell you she flipped out, she was so like starstruck and super excited for that. So it was cool seeing her energy about working with her and then seeing the second season and seeing her actually with her. And it was just, you know, it's she did amazing. The show is absolutely amazing. It's been nominated it's, for it's Emmys. So, so good. And the third and final season comes out <laughs> May second. So I'm very excited to watch I'm sad. it. I'm very excited. I'm sad it's the final season though. I know, but you'll kind of see why at the end of season two. Why season three is going to be like the last season. You'll see why. But it is absolutely an amazing show, and I can't wait for everyone to be able to see it. I know. I can't. I sh- I'm so excited. No. So, speaking of Ryan Murphy and, you know, the ballroom culture and Pose and all that, RuPaul's Drag Race, which. Yes. I don't know. Do, do you. Have you seen RuPaul's Drag Race? Of course. What gay man hasn't watched RuPaul's Drag Race? Okay, good. And if anyone doesn't know, basically, it's this show where. Drag queens across the country go to, they go to Los Angeles, California, and they recorded this show where they participate in the drag race kingdom, which is the Gay Olympics. If you, it, if you literally, say. it is the Gay Olympics. If you will, literally, <laughs> um, which is one of my all-time favorite shows. Every Friday night on VH1, it is a great show. They also have, you know, many all-star season. They have different spin-off shows. Where they have Drag Race UK, Drag Race Canada, Drag Race Australia coming out soon, Drag Race Spain, Drag Race Thailand. So it's it's pretty much a mainstream, universal, national thing at this point, worldwide thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and on many different continents. So mm-hmm. it's a very large franchise at this point. It's also been nominated and won several Emmys. Yes. So good for them. Good for Mama RuPaul. But let's talk about season 13. Okay, I am a few episodes behind. Okay, that the is The last fine. elimination, the last elimination I saw was Tamisha. Okay, Tamisha, Iman, it's coming for you. Um, Basically... <laughs> You say that every time we talk. It is so yes, funny. Because it is like the best. The other one that me and my friend Madison say all the time is, My name's Simone and I'm here for the throne. Like, we always <laughs> do that. <laughs> I I still love, I know everyone hated it, but like so many seasons ago, Roxy Edge comes to us. I'm Roxy Andrews, and I'm here to make, make it clear. clear. I, I know, know you, you love me, baby. baby. That's, That's why, why you brought me here. here. Was a bitch on season like, five. Yes. I'm gonna make it right. Give me a show and challenge, and I'll give you what you like. Yes, very, very that that catchy, you know, whatever. But so season thirteen <laughs> is the most recent season that is currently airing, and it is one of the best and one of the worst seasons. Yes, I I, I agree. <laughs> it is very long. You know, we it's been on for now three and a half months, and only five girls, I think, have sashayed away. And I'm just like, sis, like, what is going on? This is taking forever. It, it is. really is a long season. It really is. But it's also cool because we get to see more of the queens than we usually do because typically there's only nine to ten episodes. Maybe if they go, if they split different episodes, whatever it is, you know, sometimes they'll go into mm-hmm. maybe 11 and 12, but this season has 16 episodes. Mm-hmm. So 
it's definitely a longer season. Um, also, with COVID, they have to follow all these protocols and do whatnot, and they can't have any really guest stars on the show like they usually do. I mean, they had Anne Hathaway, but she was on the screen, so it was. It's very like weird, and it feels like it's just taking forever. And I love it, but at the same time, it's like, what what's going on? It's like get on with it. Exactly. Like, um. By the way for who might not know we are actually in minnesota which miss utica queen is from utica minnesota yes i had never heard of her until i saw her on drag race so oh i love her she's amazing i've seen many videos shout out to miss utica um yes shout out to you honey exactly so it is really cool and I'm really excited to see her on the show and see a Midwest queen on the show. You know, we know last season Jada, Miss Jada Essence Hall from Milwaukee, she won. Um, and the season before that, Mercedes Iman Diamond was on there, and she's also from yes. Minneapolis. Um, oh, she was iconic. Exactly. Seeing all these great, you know, Midwest queens on the show is really cool because, you know, we have a different presence over here. And especially since the gay 90s is such a iconic place to be and where Mercedes performs and it's it's really cool because getting to know her through the last few years since I was going to the drag brunches when I was 16 yep. to now being 21 and I was seeing her on the show it was really cool to kind of see that and be able to see someone representing and for who else might not know the winner of season one Bibi Zahara is also from Minneapolis at the time, yep. she was living in Minneapolis and then moved to New York. Miss Manila Luzon, also from Minneapolis, she is mm-hmm. a well-known queen in the fandom. Um, it's just really cool to see those people on the show. Usually, you see a lot of New York queens, a lot of LA, a lot of Chicago, you know, and then you see Southern ones, and then Florida. So it's really cool to see someone representing the Midwest and having the, yes. the Minnesotan accent. Really yes. cool to see her on the show. And she's doing pretty well. I'm not, there's not a whole lot of negatives to say, but I'm a little biased because, you know, she's Minnesota. Obviously I'm going to have different opinions than other people. Some people don't get her, um, but she is just an amazing queen. So it's really cool to see that, but I'm very excited. My favorite queen is Miss Rose. Oh, oh, she's hot. Miss Rose (laughs) is absolutely fantastic. She's from New York. She's got that personality. She's got that just brass, very over the top personality. And I absolutely love it. And I'm just rooting for her to win this season. I also love um what's her name? Gottmik. I Gottmik. love Gottmik. I, I like Gottmik. She is, you know, pushing the boundaries of traditional drag. Um Yes. For whoever might not know, she is a transgender man who identifies and as the a male. First one on drag race. Yes. First <clears throat> first female to male that we know of. Um to then you know be a drag queen and be on the show we've had many you know male to female queens such as jiggly and um you know peppermint and people like that but peppermint and then oh and gia gun but we have never seen someone who is uh female or male to female or i don't know what i'm mm-hmm. saying female to male and then also doing drag um and so yeah. it's really cool to see her, you know, pushing the boundaries and just being authentically her. Yes. Um, and it's re- it's really exciting, and she's doing really well on this mm-hmm. season as well. Oh, she's fantastic. Yes. So I'm excited to see where she goes. My okay. Let's talk about our top four. Okay. Okay. So my Rose. Okay. Wait. 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 So my top four is Rose Simone. Got Mick, and I have a feeling Candy's gonna be in top four. I know, I know, Candy's gonna be in the top four. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna go Rose, Got Mick, and honestly Utica. Yeah. 
I could see Utica's it. gonna make top four. I could see and it. then and then Candy. Yep. <clears throat> it's gonna be it's gonna be a fight to the death. It's gonna honey, it's gonna be like Game of Thrones. It's gonna be a bloodbath. For sure. And if any whoever doesn't win, I'm excited to also see them on an all star season. You know, if Rose or Simone or Utica does not win this season, it's going to be really cool to see them on an all star season and see their drag, you know, be brought up and to be able to show themselves again and show how they've changed. Mm-hmm. So it'll be really cool to I'm, see what happens. I'm so excited. So excited. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I guess we'll, we'll talk about it. And b- there will be discussions probably after this season. We'll probably do this again and we're going to we'll talk very much. So <laughs> very much that <laughs> another thing that is going around right now is Demi Lovato and her new documentary coming out starting on March 23rd. She is starting her docuseries. It's a four part docuseries coming out on YouTube live and It's going to follow her journey from her overdose in July of 2018 to now and her recovery through that and her, the creating of this new album, Dancing with the Devil. And I'm very excited for people to see that. I, okay. I feel it. I do want to hear her story. I really do. I feel like she's got, she's one of those artists that's such like, I have a feeling she's going to be like the next Amy Winehouse. She's going to be a powerhouse. She's going to be incredible. And I think this album is going to show a different side of her than we've ever seen. It's going to be very vulnerable. And I'm really excited to actually hear this. Oh, for sure. And it's, it's going to be very sad to see. Um, I think it's going to be very open and honest and she's going to tell the true story, and I can respect that. I have looked up to her for, I can't tell you how long, and I'm excited to see, you know, what she says, what this new music is going to sound like, whether it's going to be, you know, sad power ballads, or if we're going to get some upbeat stuff. Um, But, we'll. I mean, I guess we'll see. I am hoping for another song like Skyscraper. Ooh, that, that was would be a good. beautiful song. That would be good. And I, I want another that. song like that. That yeah. would be great. But I also do want some upbeat, you know, like, you know, sorry, not sorry. Yes, very much. <laughs> like I love was... me that those kind of vibes, that upbeat, happy, mm-hmm. good, good message songs. Yes. Speaking, of, okay, going back to RuPaul's Drag Race for a second. Do you remember that lip sync? Oh, the Sorry Not Sorry with Evie and Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn Heights at Evie. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was amazing. Oof. One of the Oof. best. One of the best. I think it was ever. probably the best one I've seen. For sure. I would I would agree with For that. Sure. I would agree. Anyway, back to Demi. I heard a rumor, and I don't know how true it is, okay. that she might be that she might be seeing somebody. I have no clue. I really don't. I know she was engaged for a little bit for like two months and then she got, she broke it off. Um, and then she went on Ellen a couple weeks ago and told Ellen that she was ready to, she was ready to mingle. She was single and ready to mingle. So she could very well be seeing somebody who that is. We shall find out. Okay. We have no, it was just, I don't, I don't know how true it was, but I heard a little something. She could very well be seeing someone who, who knows it's her life. She's living it. Um, she's alive. That's all I care about. That's seriously. I, when I heard what she was going through, I started like crying. Cause I was like, that is so fucking real. Like, Oh, for sure. I very much unfortunately. did. Unfortunately. And it happened right after my senior year of high school. And I was in a dark place myself at the time. So mm-hmm. hearing that one of my favorite people who was in a dark place had gone through something like that really kind of brought me back to reality. It seemed like, mm-hmm. um, cause I was just having fun and living my life. And then this happened and I was like, Oh shit. You know, I hope she's yeah. okay. I was not sure if she was alive. I, no one knew, no one knew what was happening. And so that's why yeah, I'm excited to see did. this documentary to see, to hear exactly what happened from her mouth. 
And you know for sure, I'm going to be watching too. I'm going to be by myself. I'm going to be watching oh, it, too. and I'm going to start. I'm going to be crying. I don't want to watch this with anybody because nope. I hate crying in front of people. But I need to be in my feels. By myself, for I'm going to sure. have probably a bowl of popcorn with some tequila, <laughs> and I'm just going to be, you know, crying and drinking, and it's going to be a that. good time. Very much that. <clears throat> so recently, I was listening to this podcast um i was listening to relax by colleen ballinger and eric stocklin and they had (laughs) this argument okay so they had this argument about this this certain topic okay so the topic was what is the first day of the week is it monday or is it sunday or the last day of the week. Is it Monday or Sunday? Sunday. Yes. That's what but I said. I feel like, but I feel like Sunday is also like the first day of the week. You know what I mean? Yep. That, that, okay. So <laughs> Colleen said like, that Sunday is the first day of the week. Cause if you look at a calendar, it starts Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and on. But if you think about it, it feels like if you if you work a Monday through Friday job, Sunday feels like the last day of the week. Uh, I suppose. Because then Monday would be the first day of the week. You go back to work and whatnot. I mean, I guess, but like not everybody works a Monday through Friday job. <laughs> exactly. But I feel like Sunday is the last day of the week and Monday is the first day of the week. I feel like Sunday's the first, but also the last. It's weird. Like, uh, people think differently. It's so, it's crazy. I'm like, okay, but here's the thing. Friday is also payday. So does that... I don't know. (laughs) For most of us, I feel like... I don't know. I feel like Friday. I have no clue. Okay. I just wanted to talk about that for a second. (laughs) Well, that's interesting. That's an interesting thing to think about. Right? Because... Eric was making the argument that Sunday was the last day and Colleen was saying that, or that Sunday was the, Colleen was saying that Sunday is the first day of the week and Eric was saying that Monday is the first day of the week. And I could kind of see where they both were coming from. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's a hard question. This is the equivalent of pineapple on pizza. Oh, I know. Okay. Well, like, but yay or nay pineapple on pizza. Yay. Oh, for sure. I love for pineapple sure. pizza. Like, Not all the time, I love but I like pizza. it. Pepperoni, it pineapple, from, three cheese. Oh, Domino's, for sure. pepperoni, pineapple, three cheese. Oh, for sure. That's my favorite. Or I, so I just like the Hawaiian. Good. Or sausage and pineapple, whatever it is. It's so good. I, I like sausage. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about was... Different words that people say differently around the country. Okay? Okay. So I have a list. I have a list of different words that people say wrong. So the first one is water. Water? Yeah. Yeah. So we say water, but apparently other people say water. Like what? what like <laughs> W-O-O-D-E-R. <laughs> or water. What? Water. Like, can I get water? It's different. I feel like that's like a British thing. I know. When you it says in Philadelphia is where people say water. It's water, right? There's (laughs) an A. Any other way, it's you're wrong. Right. Okay. The other one. So the second one is bin versus bean. Put it in the bin. Exactly. It's bin. Go throw it in the bin. Who says bean? Who says bean? Who go throw it in the bean? No, who says that? No, go that throw it weird. in the bean. That just yeah. sounds weird. Okay. Next one. Egg versus egg. Wait, what? Egg versus egg. They sound literally the exact same. I cannot tell a no difference. <laughs> One is E G G egg or egg A Y G. Oh, egg. No, it's egg. Yep. Egg. E G G. Like n- n- no. It says that people in the Pacific Northwest portion of the US say egg. And we say Y'all egg. Y'all are weird. 
The next one is picture. Picture versus picture. Picture. Yeah, it's there's a C. And other people say picture. Let's take a picture. And I say picture. The, what? Let's take a picture. It's, let's take a picture. Or I say let's take a selfie. Yep. Okay. One is, so this one is downtown versus downtown. No, it's downtown. What are you, Southern? Right? That's what I'm saying. Like, this is a fun list. This is fun. Okay. The next one is drawer versus drawer. It's drawer. Drawer. There's a W. <laughs> yep. So I'm saying, okay, bag versus bag. It's bag. Yep. Bag. Bag, yeah. Versus bag. It's very different. Okay, like, so many people say it differently. <laughs> okay, it's bag. B A G. Yes, not bag or bag, bag. I feel like I say both. I feel like it changes. I feel like it's, yeah. I feel yeah, like I kind of say depends. both. Okay. Bagel versus bagel. Bagel. It's bagel. Yes, bagel. For sure. Okay, here's one. Caramel versus caramel. I feel like it depends on what I'm talking about. Like, if I'm talking about, like, the caramel-filled M&Ms, I'm going to say caramel. But if I'm saying, like, you know, I'm going to put some caramel in my coffee. Because I feel like if you're putting it, like, in your coffee, it's, like, fancy. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if you say caramel, it sounds fancier. Okay, here's a fun one. Syrup versus syrup. Syrup. That's what. That's how you do it. Syrup. Yeah, syrup. Even though technically that's wrong. <laughs> Apparently that's wrong, <laughs> according to this website. Um, let's see. Nevada versus Nevada. 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 Ne what? Nevada <laughs> versus Nevada. It's Nevada. I don't say Nevada. I've never said Nevada. 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 That's weird. That one's weird too. Okay. That's a fun one. New Orleans or New Orleans? New Orleans. I say New, I say New Orleans. Eh, I say New Orleans just because that's how it's spelled. True. Okay. Caribbean versus Caribbean. Caribbean. Yeah, definitely. Let's go to the Caribbean. Like, I get, yeah. Yeah. I feel that one. Okay. Here's another one. Tour versus tour or tour i'm going on a tour versus a tour tour that's how yeah. you're supposed to say it i say tour um mary mary and mary <laughs> what like you're gonna marry someone or merry christmas or the name mary no it's all the same mary exactly Okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand that one. that one. That one's dumb. <laughs> I don't get that. What about aunt versus aunt? Aunt. I say, it depends. If you're saying like, like for my aunt, for like my aunts, I say aunt and then their name. Like, or you could say aunt. Like aunt for Jean. I don't have an aunt for Jean, but that's just an example. <laughs> that was a random name. It was Jean. very random. I don't know why I came up with for Jean. For Jean, I can't even say it again. For Jean, Aunt for Jean. But I feel like if you're saying like, I have an Aunt Lori, I feel like it depends on the name. Like if I'm saying Lori, I'm gonna say Aunt Lori versus Aunt for Jean. Like I'm not gonna say Aunt Lori. Like that just sounds weird, you know? I mean, I guess I feel like it's the equivalent of like using. Like before, like you use, use like a vowel in a word. Like you're supposed to use like a certain like. Oh, uh, I, well, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so when you're writing, and like, if the next word starts with a vowel, you're supposed to like. I don't even remember. I don't remember. I had to be writing to remember what I'm trying exactly. to say. Exactly. No, I know. I I think I know what you're saying. Who knows? Who <laughs> fucking knows? Honestly. I know. Who, who, who gives a shit? Honestly. You say the words you want to say. You want to say soda. You want to say pop. You want to say soda pop for all I care? Go ahead. 
Soda pop, soda pop, oh, be ashamed. God. Like, give me some lemon, some lemon, some. That was a that was a good song. <laughs> All right, guys. So that was it for this first episode of Anything Goes. I want to say thank you to Jackson for joining the first episode. <laughs> And thank you for having me. For sure. And I wanted to say... It was a nice little nice little kiki. It was. We had some fun. We talked about some fun topics. I just wanted to say thank you to whoever's listening. Um, sorry if we um, didn't talk about <laughs> anything that you were interested in. You know, that's why it's my podcast. And I am just going to talk about whatever. And if you have any recommendations you can go to the Instagram handle for this podcast, which is on Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram. It is anything goes pod underscore Zach. Actually, I think that's wrong. (laughs) It is anything goes podcast underscore Zach. You can also follow me on my regular Instagram, which is just Zachary Dobmeyer, Z A C H A R Y D O B M E Y E R. And the podcast is the. Oh my God. Why am I just mind making? <laughs> the podcast Girl. is A N Y T H I N G G O E S P O D C A S T underscore Z A C H. You can also listen on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. Wherever you find your podcast, the link is in the bio of the Instagram and my Instagram. You can also follow me on TikTok at that same handle as my Instagram. And I hope you guys have a great day, night, wherever you are, whenever you are listening. And thank you for listening.